welcome to the first episode of the ERC Student and Staff Summer Talk Series. In this series, I will be chatting with some of our amazing ERC staff to share with you important information that will help you transition into UCSD. And on this first episode, we have the pleasure to have our Provost of Anna Roosevelt College, Yvonne Evans, with us to send his warm welcome and also to share with you more information about Anna Roosevelt College. And that being said, I will first invite Provost Evans to introduce himself. Thank you very much, Davey. Yes, my name is uh, Ivan Evans, and I'm the Provost of uh, Eleanor Roosevelt College. Uh, this is my second term and my sixth or seventh year as Provost of Eleanor Roosevelt College. I am a, a sociologist in the Department of Sociology which I joined back in 1989, I think, around about there. So I've been here a long time. Um, and uh, you, some of you might know uh, if you've done some research on me, um, or you might recognize from my accent that I am South African. And um, uh, so that has been a very formative part of my uh, background and uh, really has molded me, I think, uh, for the way in which I um, behave and act uh, as provost. Um, a lot of the lessons that I learned in South Africa, fighting for social justice and against racial oppression, have um, been uh, some of the most important uh, 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 sort of guidelines for me. Um, uh, when I, ever since I've been provost of Eleanor Roosevelt College. Thanks, Bros. And um, would you like to give your welcome to the new Tritons? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, congratulations uh, for making it into a, uh, into a great university uh, and into a, a great college. Um, as you know, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt College is only one of uh, seven soon, one of only eight uh, colleges uh, at uh, UC San Diego. Uh, and each college is different, and I'm not going to sing the praises of the other colleges, um, but I don't think it's uh, unfair to them uh, for me to say um, that Eleanor Roosevelt College is distinguished by its uh, very resolute focus on questions of international affairs and international justice. And so it doesn't really matter uh, what your major is, uh, what your career goals are. I want to welcome you uh, into a college um, that um, understands the diversity uh, amongst its students, uh, just as it understands the diver diversity uh, on, uh, in the world. So we appreciate your background, we appreciate your experience, we appreciate your perspective, whatever it is, because we believe uh, that what you bring, uh, no matter what it is, no matter where it's from, is essential to creating world citizens, um, uh, especially in this moment of world history. Yeah, congratulations on new trends, and we're very excited having you all join the ERC and UCSD families. And Provost, you mentioned that each we have many colleges here at UCSD, and each of them have a philosophy that they base on. Could you tell us a little bit about what's the philosophy of ERC and how it's embedded in our general education or ERC program in general? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you are dead right. Uh, each college is distinguished by a, a, um, a, specific, a specific focus, uh, which is not to say that we are all you know, entirely, completely different. All the colleges perform the same functions. In introducing students, we perform residential uh, uh, functions uh, for students. All colleges deal with um, questions of uh, uh, the student experience. All colleges deal with questions of academic integrity. Um, and uh, a whole host of things that we do in common. But it is true also that each college has its distinctive style and its distinctive perspective. And that, I think, is what makes the undergraduate experience at UC San Diego so different. Um, UCSD does not have, as you know by now, uh, one set of uh, GEs for all students. Rather, the GEs are distinguished by colleges. So there are as many GE requirements as there are colleges. Sure, there's a lot of overlapping um, amongst the uh, GEs in the different colleges, 
but each college crafts its GEs um, to uh, express the mission and the vision and the perspective uh, of that uh, college. And so, um, Eleanor Roosevelt College uh, is distinguished by its focus on international uh, issues. Um, uh, today we speak about more about uh, the college being a global college, uh, focus on global issues, um, but the basic mission remains the same ever since the college was created in 1988. Um, and that is to focus on questions of international communication, international peace, international justice, building walls uh, across um, um, the multiple barriers, whether they're international borders or racial, gender, um, it, uh, uh, whatever social divisions sort of divide the world. The mission of the college is to look for ways to reach out across those barriers and to bring people together. And so, and this is what really distinguishes the college, because uh, we have a resu very resolute focus on, um, on this mission uh, to create global citizens um, based on a, a, a common multicultural understanding uh, of the world. And so you, you're quite correct, uh, Davy. If you look at you, uh, you, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt's college, uh, college, you will see that there are different components all sort of cohere uh, and hinge around questions of international uh, peace and international justice. Um, the, uh, perhaps in many senses, we think of your writing program, uh, the making of the modern world, uh, as the anchor of the uh, college's focus on international relations. Um, the um, MMW program uh, uh, for both uh, freshman students as well as for transfer students, um, although they have been modified, all uh, attempt to give students an understanding of the international, of the, uh, uh, the evolution of the international uh, states system, uh, of international issues, uh, the major events that have brought the world together and sometimes torn the world apart and the history that has gone into uh, balancing war and peace and justice and, and multicultural understanding in an international context. So MMW really addresses those issues and I think pro you know, provides, a, we, we all think in the college, faculty as well, that uh, the program really does provide a sound understanding, uh, a, a basis for understanding the world today, uh, for understanding many of the events um, um, that dominate the headlines, wars here, conflicts over here, agreements and peace treaties over here. I think MMW provides that historical context to understand the world in which uh, we live uh, today. And that's only one program. We have many other. Uh, uh, programs, uh, some of which are student initiated, some of which are long-standing college programs that uh, encourage students, students to think as uh, like world citizens, to think of their community as a global community and to see themselves as inserted into um, a global context. Ellie's Garden, for example, reminds us, you know, of the um, of the environmental unity uh, of this planet uh, and how um, eating well, attending to the earth well, um, is an essential way uh, of providing a, uh, a healthy society. Um, there are multiple such uh, student programs and events and opportunities that all emphasize the fact of us being part of a global community and which were in some sense we um, can be or ought to be uh, responsible for the well-being uh, of all of us and ultimately of the planet. That's the overriding message that has always held ERC together. Yeah, thank you, Provost. Definitely for the three years I've been here, either from taking the MNW writing sequence or being a part of the ERC community in being involved in different type of organizations and our regional specialization requirements, those have already all, always been stimulating me to think deeper, think above just my own community, but to think across the borders to, to become more than just myself, but to think about the community and service I can give to, to the world.
Yeah, I, I agree. I think that in combination, the, uh, the regional specialization requirement and the uh, MMW focus, which explores the origins of society, um, uh, you know, going back to about 1100 to the contemporary period, uh, taken together, the emphasis on the global evolution of world history and your chosen regional specialization really is an excellent complement. They really work well uh, together uh, to cement that idea uh, of, of, um, uh, of the vision of the world as a one international space. Yeah, totally. And so while for all the incoming ERC students on their journey to be prepared and to become a successful global citizens, what type of resources are available to them here at ERC, which is there to be home base? Yes. Um, I think f uh, first and foremost, uh, I, I do again want to emphasize the importance of MMW uh, to, uh, to, uh, to students in acquiring um, that vision and understanding of the world um, as one sort of international uh, system uh, broken down into different communities that sometimes squabble and sometimes get on uh, as, as world history marches on. Uh, so MMW, I think within ERC, uh, is kind of a glue that holds uh, you know, our vision and then after that our programs uh, together. Um, the college also offers um, you know, leadership opportunities for students. Uh, many, all the other colleges do as well. I, I, must, I must be uh, you know, uh, fair about this. Um, all colleges, for example, provide opportunities for students to be orientation leaders. Um, a very important, a very fun, um, and I think a very important uh, a contribution that students make to the college. Yeah, students run so much of uh, our reach out to students and to parents, and um, learning how to deal with an international community, a diverse community, uh, is wonderful. And it's excellent to see our 60 uh, OLs each year. Um, I think there are about 60. Um, um, there's a last this year. It's about like 30. Uh, 30. Okay, is it about 30? Uh, well, about 30 OLs who, um, who uh, pr program and plan and talk to students from different parts of the country, different parts of the world, and of course parents from different parts of the world and different parts of the country as well. So I think that provides such an important formative development um, in being a world citizen, the confidence to deal with um, and to embrace um, diversity. Um, the college also offers um, other experiential programs, which uh, again hinge around questions of international relations and international justice. For example, all students at, at UCSD um, uh, uh, can, take, uh, can participate in global seminars, which are five-week programs that are taught during the summer except that they taught somewhere in, in the world. So ERC students also participate in those. What distinguishes the global seminars that are associated with ERC is our emphasis on experiential learning, doing, learning by doing, becoming a world citizen by actually doing work mm. in different parts of the world. And so we have two kinds of programs. One we call the MMW uh, Global Seminar, uh, in which uh, one of your MMW courses is taught in, as part of the program somewhere in the world, whether it's in Japan, Australia, South Africa, Zambia, India. Uh, you know, we have about 25, I think, participating, participating countries at this point. So um, you learn your MMW course in Athens or in, uh, in, in Nice or in Paris or in Cape Town. So again, learning by meeting um, uh, different people. Um, is actually the goal of, the, of all global seminars. Well, what we do in ERC is that we, we, we liaise with NGOs in different countries and we incorporate NGO work into our global seminars so that, for example, with the global seminars that I lead, um, you can go to India, um, South Africa, uh, Zambia, um, and you will actually do physical manual labor planting thousands of trees together with local NGOs, cleaning up um, gutters and uh, urban streams in, in cities, 
um, planting things together with local villagers uh, in Zambia and working side by side um, with local villagers in making, uh, 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 and, uh, making uh, objects. For example, in Zambia, we made what are called rocket stoves mm -hmm. out of cow, a mixture of cow dung, earth and elephant dung, which we picked up fresh every morning. And we made these rocket stones, stoves, which are very efficient in using fuel so that you don't have to carry a lot, break a lot of wood or break trees in order to make wood, you pick up twigs, etc. And it really um, works extremely efficiently. Uh, so rocket stoves, uh, you know, we learn about in the environment, about conserving the en environment, about extracting as a maximum energy um, out of uh, easily av available fuels. Um, without breaking trees, etc. So th the experience is very immersive. Um, so if you participate in a global seminar, I suggest that you look at the ERC and MMW global seminars because we provide incredible, incredible opportunities for you to meet with and to work with people in different parts uh, of the world. Right now, the director of the uh, Making of the Modern World program uh, Dr. Matthew Herbst, even as I speak right now, is on a global seminar in Santa Cruz um, where he has a program for people with disabilities. And apparently it's going wonderfully. It's 25 students, the maximum number that can be taken in any global seminar. And he's working with NGOs and learning about uh, the experiences and how to cater for and how to work with um, people with, uh, with disabilities. So it's an MMW, it's a global seminar, but with an experiential component to it. That's the, that's the goal of, of ERC, is to impart not only an academic understanding of the world, but also to point out the opportunities for each individual student to participate in transforming that world, regardless of your major. Yeah, thanks, Pro Sevens. I can't think of a better way to learn than mm. participate in the MMW Global Seminars. Not only you get immersed, I feel like being immersed to actually see what you're learning and doing things, that's the, like, the best way to learn. And you know? fun. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that you have been with Eleanor Roosevelt College for many years now. So I would like to like ask you, what is your favorite part about being the Provost of Eleanor Roosevelt College? Ah, there are so many. Yes, it is true. I am an ERC faculty member. So when I joined the university in 1989, I think it was, um, I immediately became associated with the college. And I have actually taught MMW courses for about 25 years uh, myself. So, and I have a long association with the college with many different experiences. And interestingly, uh, the one event that stands out most in my mind uh, is not since I've been a provost, but while I was still a faculty person in the Department of Sociology who taught in the making of the modern world. Um, the event, there was a college event, um, I think it was called the MM, MMW Blowout wow. or the ERC Blowout, M M the, the MMW Blowout, mm -hmm. uh, which is a kind of a carnival a festival uh, for, for mm -hmm. ERC students. And I foolishly signed up uh, for uh, to offer to be dunked. <laughs> so I sat on this chair above a large barrel of ice cold water and students had to throw a ball and hit a lever. And if they hit the lever, the lever would drop me into the bucket of water. Mm -hmm. And so I sat there for like 10 minutes like and the balls were whizzing past me. And fortunately, we didn't have great pitches. And so they didn't hit the lever until at the very end. Um, somebody did hit the lever and I dropped into a large barrel of water all the way to the bottom. So it was a fun thing. The students looked so embarrassed and they looked so apologetic, but it was great fun. So that really stands out in my mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a sad question. Are you planning to do something similar in the future? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we have had that. I just didn't volunteer oh. uh, to do it again uh, myself. You're right. That would be something very nice to institute again. And I could ask... Uh, uh, some of my least favorite people on campus like, who would you like to join? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. And now we are chatting very close by and I had the pleasure of asking a lot of questions to the provost. And but 
what if other ERC students want to get to know you and learn more about you and just chatting about your own experience teaching and going around the world leading global seminars would they be able to do that yes absolutely and I do that a lot um, for some reason especially in the fall quarter I think when students really want to know and learn and to meet uh, uh, professors uh, absolutely I'm totally available and open I think about two years about in the year before COVID my scheduler my assistant was actually protesting because there were so many students who wanted to meet me. I think I met over 50 students in the fall quarter alone. Um, so I invite you just to shoot me an email um, at uh, ievans at uh, ucsd.edu. Um, and uh, or you can call my office number, but e uh, e uh, email is always the best. Uh, and I will immediately forward the email to a scheduler who will contact you within 24 hours and we'll set up a time to meet. And I'm, you can, we, we meet very often in my office in the ERC building or somewhere at one of the coffee shops um, or eateries uh, somewhere on campus. And um, you might gather that I do like to talk. I do like to meet students. Um, and so I, I have formed relationships with students uh, that have lasted decades actually. I'm still in contact with many students who are, whom I first taught um, you know, back in the early 1990s when I started teaching MMW. And these students are scattered around the world and often when I travel I meet up with them in different parts of the world. I met up with somebody in Paris, I met with somebody in uh, Japan and in Australia, one, one in, uh, in South Africa. Um, when I woke up to the Bay Area, there's three students whom I always see, whom I always call, and we always meet. So yes, I love to meet uh, meet with students and to um, uh, and you know, and the only purpose is to chat. No other reason, uh, really. Get to know me, uh, get to know me as a proxy for getting to know professors, which is a very important thing for students to do. Um, so absolutely, uh, people should uh, feel, you know, students should feel totally free to reach out to me in one way uh, or, the, or the other. Uh, I really do enjoy it. Yeah, here we go. So if you, are, if you want to learn more about Provo's cool stories, just <laughs> reach out to him. <laughs> and yeah, thank you so much, Provost, for sharing all the information about yourself and the ERC programs are our, our core philosophies. And now I will pass the mic to you ah. and then... <laughs> You will be interviewing me and I will share some um, information and perspective from a current student. Yeah, I, uh, thank you very much. And, uh, and I mean, right here, I think uh, Davy is, uh, is an illustration of the kinds of opportunities uh, that the college makes available. You know, you having the confidence and the skills uh, to put together uh, this interview and me now interviewing you and you having the confidence and the pleasure of sharing your views with the audience. Fantastic. Another great leadership experience. So I guess I'll turn the tables on you, uh, Davy, and ask you um, how you are involved in the ERC community and how you see the college yourself as a student. Yeah, so I'm involved in ERC primarily through the orientation programs. You mentioned that earlier. So the ori uh, I've been working on the orientation program for three years now. I started as an orientation leader. That's where I discovered like, oh, I love working with new students, helping them to transition into UCSD as smoothly as possible. So I went on and become a senior orientation leader the second year. And now I'm an orientation intern now planning all the programs and then help train all the OLs to prepare them to give the new student knowledge they need to succeed here at U UCSD. And for me, um, UCSD is truly one of a kind. I always think it's the best college. And I was an international student. I grew up in China. And then coming here, I never felt like that I was a stranger because everyone's so embracive and our requirement and classes are so internationally focused. Actually, I learned a lot about the Chinese histories here at UCSD. I was like, I can't imagine, I have never heard that before. And then here at UCSD through MNW and also the regional specialization requirement, I was able to broaden my, my understanding of my own culture, but also 
maybe the culture of people around me so I can keep a open mind and that helps me to prepare my work for orientation to create a welcoming and warm environment for all the new students. And I have also just now every time I pass by ERC, maybe I'm going to the beach <laughs> or somewhere else to go to classes. It just gave me a feeling of home. My home is like about 10,000 miles away here from here. And then ERC really gave me that feelings of home. I get, I will be able, I'm able to chat with the provost <laughs> and I'm also able to work with all the amazing staff here at ERCs. They gave me a lot of support to help my achieve my own goals. And that really helped me to just like feel home here at ERC. Yeah, yeah fantastic. I do believe uh, that you're absolutely correct and that you're not just saying nice things. Uh, I do believe that is the case. In fact, you've been uh, involved with the college now for at least two years, three. And yeah, this is my three years. Yeah, for what I've met you in a number of different contexts already. So uh, thank you for the contribution to the college and it's, it's great uh, that you're having a wonderful experience. You, you've also had uh, been here long enough now to know that uh, orientation programs, which are so, so vital to the college um, because they are vital to students. Um, we try to keep them dynamic. We try to, you know, make them address the new incoming cohort. And so we change around with the structure, um, you know, every now and again. And um, I, we kind of have a new orientation program going right now. Are you familiar with that? Could you comment on the, uh, how, like how different it is and um, what's it like? Yeah. So before the pandemic, all component of the orientation program is in person. But unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we have to shift everything online, all activity, we have to yeah. do it in an online form. But now with everything getting better, we have moved some of the component back to in-person because we all know for the past two years, online interactions is never the same as in-person interactions. So for this coming year, we have basically divided orientation program into two component. We will first have a mandatory virtual programs. So basically student will be registering and attending those on Zoom where we will have information sharing small group time with their orientation leaders for like community bondings. But on top of that, we also have a in-person optional orientation program that, but those will focus more on community buildings. So students will be able to meet other students, hang out with their OLs, do fun activities. We have planned a lot of fun activities, so stay tuned for that. That's the basically the plan for this year. And I hope to see you in all those programs. Yeah, orientation is mandatory, so we will see you for sure. Yeah. So, well, it sounds like you are, you're like an OG now. You're an old gangster now. You've been around <laughs> the block, right? Uh, so, um, and so you've learned a lot, you know, in the three years that you've been as a student at UCSD, in ERC, and with your, uh, the various leadership opportunities, um, uh, positions that you've held within the college. So you're kind of like a different person now than you were three years ago. <laughs> So tell me, um, if you look back over three years, three, three years ago, uh, uh, would you have any tips for incoming students? Did, is there anything that you learned on the way in the past three years that you think would be useful for them as they become OG as well? <laughs> yes. So on your way to become an OG ERC <laughs> student, um, I would highly recommend just don't be afraid to ask for help because when you come into a new environment, it may be intimidating because it's always difficult to step out of your comfort zone and step out into a new environment. But we're all here to help. We have the orientation program and all the department here at UCSD that helps students to transition into UCSD and to succeed as a scholar here. So if you have any questions, I would highly recommend just reach out to us. We are more than happy to help. We are always here for you. If you have and concern, you don't have to deal with those alone. We are always here to help you. Yeah, you know, this reminds me of something. Um, you know, the university is a very good university and, and the students do really work hard here. Yeah? Um, and sometimes they have a reputation of being like a place where a lot of work takes place. Um, from your perspective as a student who's been here for three years, would you say that there's like healthy opportunities for fun 
organizations, programs, things to do that are unrelated to grades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of fun thing to do. Like some of the thing I like to do is always going to watch the sunset with my friend. Yeah. We were so close to the beach yeah. and we are on a cliff. So the sunset is super beautiful. I always go there like after lectures. And I also, I held um, multiple jobs on campus actually. So I worked as a lab assistant and also as a orientation leader for um, three years now. Those are all great learning opportunity that's unrelated to academic, but you're actually learning skill. For example, in orientation, I learned like how to cut up videos, how to edit videos, and also how to interact with different people and how to do marketings. And then in my lab assistant job, I learned how to do hands-on experience and hands-on experiment and to maintain all the equipment at labs that helps me to prepare for my professional career. And also we have so much event here at ERC. Sometimes you just go on to the ERC green, you will see some things going on. Yeah. Last quarter we had a camel on the ERC green. Yeah. Because if you don't know already, camel Jamal is our mascot. So we got camels and we also had llama on the ERC green. That's for like a second year event. We have free food, free cookie, and a bunch of gave away. Yeah. So we will normally post those information on our Instagram page so you can check that out. But normally during school years, you pass by the ERC green, you will see something going on there. There's also other, a lot of student orgs. We have more than 500 student orgs here at UCSD. There is definitely gonna be one that meets your interest. So you can reach out to that and join those organizations. They have separate event. And then depending what your major is, your major will have event too. So for example, I'm biology major we just had the genetic retreat we get to meet people from the same field just chatting regularly chatting about like chatting with professor learning their experience how they have go through all their research journeys just to learn more that those are things you will definitely not learn in classes yeah but you will be able to do that as a UCSD student yeah and that's true and, and to remember again that this is one of the great gifts in my opinion about the college system is that a lot of the activities that you mentioned happen within the environment of ERC so again you'll see um, although you have ample opportunities to meet every student on campus if you want to uh, the college system does reinforce your relationships with, the, with other students in your college. You go to the same MMW courses, you eat, you eat pretty much in the same cafe, cafeteria, although you can eat at any other cafeteria as well. Very often you will eat in the same cafeteria. So you will see similar students, the same students in your MMW classes, you'll see them in Cafe Ventanas, you'll walk along the sidewalk, you'll belong to the same college clubs, you'll, take, you'll participate in the same college opportunities for leadership. So, at the end of the day, the colleges do provide that kind of a clubby and a, a family sort of feel, um, a sort of a kind of a community uh, within this large uh, and excellent uh, university. So, I agree with you. Uh, lots of opportunities. So, you've had many opportunities, obviously. So, does one stand out? Any one particular uh, experience that you've had stand out as your favorite? Oh, it has to be the orientation <laughs> programs. Or that's why I've been stick with it for three years. So for my first quarters, I just want to get involved. So I got into the orientation programs as an orientation leader. I learned so much during the training about ERC that not only like helped me to facilitate new student transition, but it also helped me as an ERC student with all the requirements. And there's also a lot of fun event just within the orientation team. So for this year, we all went to the, the challenge course. We challenge ourselves to, to step out of our comfort zone, which is something we may be doing during orientations for the orientation leader. And we also had meal together multiple times and I got fun with the, the staff at the student affair programs and learn more about what their experience is and they always super supportive at, and giving me the opportunity to try new things, yeah. to test out new programs, to learn new skills. So this has to be my favorite opportunity ever. And the college certainly benefits from the freshness, the innovation and the constant change. So 
Thank you very much indeed. I hope that uh, this conversation uh, sort of gives students uh, kind of a feel for the kind of casual dynamic that you know emerges after a while between students, the professors, and the staff. Um, so thank you very much for this opportunity. I, yeah. David, I enjoyed it. Thanks so much for joining us, Provo Sevens. And just a sneak peek into next week's episode. Next week, we will be sharing more information about how to make the most of housing and dining here on campus and to have a great time. And that being said, stay tuned, new Tridents, and I will see you all next week. Thank you.